Hey you, my name is Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to measure windy weather and show you how to properly fly your drone in windy conditions. But before we get started, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos go up. Now, how windy is too windy to fly? I get that question a lot. I understand you don't want to be that person that loses their drone to mother nature, right? I'm not going to share his name, but I am going to share a story. I was visiting two friends in the Bay Area, and after a couple nights of chasing the Milky Way with our cameras, we decided to fly our drones a little closer to the San Francisco area. Don't worry, drone police, we were still flying in illegal airspace. Anywho, he flew his Mavic up, and started flying in the same direction that the wind was moving closer to the city. I flew my Phantom 4 Pro up and I decided to fly against the wind. About 10 minutes into his flight, he realized that his battery was draining faster than usual and he struggled to have control over his drone. It's safe to say that his drone quickly became a flyway and he never saw it again. The winds were so strong that day that if I didn't have a Phantom 4 Pro, I probably would have lost my drone as well. Personally, I've noticed that the Phantom series tends to handle wind a little bit better than the Mavic series. But as we all know, it depends on each situation. Regardless of what drone you're flying, strong winds are gonna make your flight more difficult and unpredictable. I suggest skipping a flight if it's extra windy out, but there are moments when you don't have a choice. For example, when you're on a drone job. Let me share some simple tools to help you estimate wind speed and determine if it's safe to fly. I suggest utilizing drone-friendly apps to ensure a safe flight. Altitude plays a huge role in your wind speeds. For example, the wind speed could be 50 miles per hour on the ground, but then be completely different when you're 200 feet up in the sky. There are many drone apps out there, but today I'm gonna to talk about two that share information about the weather at your desired flight location. The first being the UAV forecast app. The UAV forecast app gives wind profiles at different altitudes and a detailed forecast. This app will literally tell you if it's good to fly or not safe to fly based on weather predictions. The Hover app is another personal fave. Besides providing detailed weather predictions, they also provide information about no flight zones directly taken from AirMap. You can log information about your flights in the app, which you can review later. Let's say you're on location and you don't have access to these applications. Review the maximum speed of your drone provided by your manufacturer. Now I know it's very unlikely that most of you have this manual just sitting in your bag, so simply just Google the maximum speed of your drone and the wind speed of the city that you're flying in. The maximum speed of the drone determines up to which wind speed can be flown. I did not mean to rhyme. <laughs> a rule of thumb says that the wind can be up to two thirds of the drone's maximum speed. According to DJI, the Phantom 4 Pro can supposedly fly up to 45 miles per hour. So the maximum allowed wind speed would be 30 miles per hour. I personally don't like to fly in winds that are more than 15 to 20 miles per hour with my Phantom 4 Pro or Mavic 2 Pro. Especially if I'm planning to fly my drone over a body of water in the same direction that the wind is moving. If I fly my drone in the same direction that the wind is moving, it can be picked up by the wind and it makes it extremely difficult to return to home. Okay, now it's time to fly. Most accidents happen during takeoff and landing. If you have to fly in windy conditions, follow these easy steps to make it a smooth flight. When you arrive at the location that you're flying, look for a spot that is protected from the wind and also be aware of the obstacles in your flight path. In this clip, I was flying near the beach. Realistically, it would have been best if I had a trash can or a car to block the path of the wind where I took off. It makes it easier to launch a drone if you have something to block the wind. If you're going to fly off the ground, place the drone down with the camera facing the same direction of the wind path. You wanna make sure that you stand five feet behind the drone in case something goes wrong in the takeoff. If you're hand launching your drone like I normally do, make sure you hold your drone out and have the camera facing the direction of the wind path. It's extremely important that you keep the drone leveled and not tilted. If it's tilted when you launch it, it can tip over in the direction that the wind is coming and crash. Once you're up in the air, fly your drone against the wind. Your drone's battery drains quicker in windy conditions. By first flying against the wind, you get a sense of how much battery you have left in return flight. Then when it comes to returning your drone back for a landing, the wind will push your drone back in your general direction. This method prevents you from having a flyaway with the wind pushing it away, like in the case of my friend who unfortunately lost his drone. If you fly it in the same direction that the wind is moving, make sure to create buffer time to fly it back since it will be fighting the wind. When you fly it wind down, the drone tends to move faster. When it's time to fly against the wind, the drone will be working at full capacity to make it back. 
At this point, I highly suggest switching your remote to S mode, also known as sport mode, so that you are using the full maximum speed of your drone. Also, create buffer time so that your drone returns in time. For example, if you normally fly a drone back at 30% on a particular flight path, try flying it back at 40% so that you don't have an accident due to low battery error. You have to pay closer attention to your drone's battery life in windy conditions. This isn't a necessity, but I highly suggest switching your remote to attitude mode if you want smooth, seamless shots. In attitude mode, GPS information is not collected and the drone will continue moving in whatever direction you are going before you let go of the sticks. The drone will glide in the wind in the general direction that you move the joysticks, creating a seamless and uninterrupted shot. The wind will naturally speed up the movement of your drone. Try to keep your speed down to avoid unexpected turbulence and jarring movements caused by these gusts of wind. By doing this, you have better control over your drone movements and you can always speed up the footage and post. Landing a drone in windy conditions can be very sketchy even more so than when you're launching a drone. I personally prefer to can catch it in windy conditions since I know it most likely would not tip over. If you're landing it on the ground, face the drone against the wind so that it doesn't tip over the front side when it lands. If you're hand catching it, hover the drone at a high altitude and slowly bring it down before snagging the leg or belly of the drone. Keep the drone above you until the propellers are completely turned off. Then bring the drone down to your level. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, subscribe to stay up to date on new videos and feel free to comment below if you have any drone related questions or stories to tell. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. See you in the next video.